All right. Hello, 14ers, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is September 29th, 2020. And <laughs> I'm apprehensive about uh, the info for today's video. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure what to say. We kind of get, you know, this, the, the feast wear out, but I, I'm feeling this this anxiousness, this need, this weariness, this energy, this deflating, this combination of everything going on. You know, I it, when and, it, and it's not because I, I'm like sad or bummed or anything like that. I'm actually extremely excited. Um, <laughs> you've never heard me extremely excited like this before, though, I'm sure. Um, because I'm I'm very tentative, and I've told you guys dozens of times, I'm never going to tell you um, uh, this is it 100% in relation to a date. Um, this ministry was never built on dates. Do we talk about a lot of dates? Do we watch for specific time frames? Yes, based on scripture. We have the ministry that the Lord for some reason has chosen to open the books in end time understanding. Of that, there is no doubt. And anybody who's new to this ministry can come and watch this six-part video series in the introduction teachings to these end time revelations. Watch the first two 30-minute videos, and if your jaw doesn't hit the floor and say, oh my goodness, now I get it. That has happened to hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of people here in Ministry Revealed, that have finally begun to understand how to see the scriptures the way they were meant to be understood. To understand that the Gospels are speaking to different groups of people, and specifically in this ministry, in the end days, in these end times that are upon us. Now, we're already in them, but specifically the tribulation portion of those days. You know, you've all been taught that tribulation is seven years. Turns out there's two sets of seven, one for the one for the church and one for the Jews. And for, but there's good news, though, right? There is a pre-trib escape for a portion of the church and the rest of the church. The rest of the church, sorry, will go through the tribulation of seals, but they will be raptured and they will go to paradise. So, you know, you don't want to be around for that. You know, repent now. Right? For the remission of sins, come to Jesus Christ, ask for that forgiveness, and be baptized in the water with the with the receiving of the Holy Ghost. All right. It's upon us. And I am not, by the way, in case you're wondering if I was gonna tell you a hundred percent, I'm not gonna tell you a hundred percent because I told you, unless I get a thus saith the Lord, unless I get a visitation, I'm it no matter what the scriptures are pointing and showing to me uh, in relation to a date, unless I get it from the Lord himself, I am not telling you 100%. But what I can tell you is I'm, I'm anxious about this one. I'm, I'm, I'm nervous. I'm, I'm excited. And yeah, all those things. And uh, I'm going to show you it today. We're going to get into all of it. I'm going to show you some other connections. You know, one of the one of the biggest things was uh, Enoch in the past. Uh, you know, another or not one of the biggest things, but Enoch was something that we're, we'll chat on briefly. And I'm going to show you the connection to this. Um, another big thing. Well, one of the biggest things, which is what I was going to get at, is the feast of weeks let's face it the feast of weeks is the first fruit of the wheat harvest that is the bride of christ that is literally the 10 percent of the bride of christ of, of the church that christ has taken out first that passed back on june 7th so what's going on we know we can't go to next year even our little sister Mila said the Lord told her 2020. We have uh, the Bob Jones prophecy that I talk about once in a while. 
with uh, when Kansas City wins the Super Bowl. Well, they won the Super Bowl. Um, and it was a 50-year stint as, too, as well, by the way. Um, we know by looking around and going to the grocery stores, people trying to work and people getting laid off everywhere that there's not life as usual. Things have changed as of March 11th, which, by the way, when uh, I received that that confirmation from Jodell, I don't know if you guys had caught that. When I got that confirmation email from Jodell, it was late in the evening of, of uh, March 10th, and she sent it to me on March 11th at like 12.30 or something like that a.m., the the global pandemic hadn't even been revealed yet. It hadn't even been declared this global pandemic. And in the video that was with the confirmation was the revelation that it would be a global pandemic that they would launch in China first, that it would spread to the West. The West would go into lockdown. There were people around the world that would be visibly dying. And then war comes next. World war comes next. After Israel is attacked. That she got that hours before, well, a day before they released that they they made the announcement on March eleventh that it was a global pandemic. Guys, we we've we've had some things here in this ministry that have happened, that have come to pass. We've had two of them clearly. And so, you know, we know, we know. The whole revelation of the 13 and 14 years. If God doesn't do it on his feast day or a feast day, it would have to be on some other random day. Do you know there's only one portion of time left in this 13 to 14 year count that equals this year? That's directly Harvest related? Remember when I spoke in the last video, in this last video, I was talking to you guys about those two things with um, with tabernacles. You know, they've got the in-gathering, which is the lesser, and then there's Feast of Tabernacles. And I thought, okay, well, that's interesting. But, you know, it's because in-gathering is only mentioned twice as two separate words, in-gathering. And there was a reason for it. And we, we touched a little bit on that in the last video. And I even spoke in the last video, you know, as much as Monday, this past Sunday into Monday was looking really good. It looked really good more so to me that it might be when Israel would be attacked. Because I do believe that Israel is in their 50th year. You know, our sister Emma that had gone and tracked it all back doing these jubilee counts, you know, in this entire thing that she did, it goes all the way back thousands of years. And I do believe it's the 50 for Jerusalem because there's a reason they're about to be attacked and destroyed because they've been disobedient. We spoke about that in the last video. However, however, you guys know what I'm talking about here or you were about to. This was the video that I really prayed hard about and got the confirmation from Jodell and then I did this video to say let's be clear we know when and it was about this after the 50th tribulation begins well we were just in the last video I'd been thinking well look there might be a connection even based on the 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 word I got from her the confirmation that maybe the 50th we're looking for is this jubilee for Jerusalem. And it still might be a part of it. But it wasn't what I had spoken about here. Because what was the confirmation? 50 equals 14 equals 50, right? The letter noon equals 50. It's the 14th letter of the Hebrew alphabet. O.C. Hosea means 14, uh, uh, um, who is the son of noon. So the deliverer is the son of 14, okay? We, we've gone through all these things. But this 50th wasn't about the Jubilee, right? It was about the Feast of Weeks. That's why back here 
in this time frame, we were buzzing like we were now because we were so excited about finding this connection to after the 50th, 14 begins and all those things. Because I got a confirmation from the Lord, a supernatural confirmation directly from the Holy Spirit that I'd never experienced in my life. But it passed. How was it possible? How is it possible in the 70th year that it's come and passed? How is it possible? It wasn't making sense. Because the uh, uh, Feast of Weeks, Shavuot, Pentecost, is the first fruits of the wheat harvest. So something was missing. Something was clearly missing. And for those who are saying, well, how is this the Feast of Weeks? Well, remember this other piece we realized? We're going to touch on these things as I go into, um, as I get into uh, 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 Leviticus again. Because that's where we're going to get the revelation. You see, when we go into Leviticus, we get we get the uh, 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 Sabbaths. Then we have the confirmation, the conversation of about Passover on the fourteenth of Nisan of the fourteenth day of the first month. Then it says, um, uh, she, <laughs> then it has the next feast, which is the uh, 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 feast of unleavened bread, and unleavened bread goes from the fifteenth month, and it's seven days long. But for some reason, we're all told that first fruits is in the midst of the feast. And I, I, I'm not sure I follow that. It didn't really seem to jive. Why would you have a feast in the middle of a feast? So when it said the Sabbath after, here's your Passover, here's your feast of unleavened bread, the Passover after, or the, the moral after the after the Sabbath, I should say, is first fruits. And we looked at things like this with um, with uh, Luke chapter twenty one, you know, and in John, you know, he he appears and then he leaves, you know, after three days. Does he resurrect here? Yes, he resurrects here, but he doesn't hang out, right? In Luke twenty one, he vanishes. In John, he says, "Don't touch me." So we don't know exactly how long it is before he comes back but he leaves before coming back and appearing to them again it would appear it's the fo- the day after the following sabbath because a, a, a feast in a feast it just it just doesn't line up i don't get it right a lot of people don't get it and when we understood this and we did the sabbath counts one two three four five six seven sabbaths well the moral after is the 50th See, the 15th of Savan. And if you remember the temple scrolls, right? It said that uh, Sukkot, Shavuot, feast, uh, not Sukkot, sorry, Shavuot, which is Feast of Weeks or Pentecost, was the 7th of Savan, not the 6th of Savan. You see, this is where I'll bring up um, um, Enoch. You see, they believe that Enoch who was taken, who we're praying to be like an Enoch, taken out before everything begins. He walked with God and he was not, for God took him, and he was 365, right? 365 years. Well, we talked about this from Chuck Missler's website uh, when we talked about Enoch in the past. But I'm going to show you something we haven't seen here before. We hadn't understood before because we just hadn't yet understood the connection. You see, last year, when we were looking at these time frames last year, when we were looking at uh, feast of uh, of tabernacles, we didn't understand. We thought we were the eighth day, you know, because it says when Jesus comes at about an eight days. But then we get greater understanding that we're not looking for that about an eighth day. That's when He returns. We find out now in Luke nine that the, it was that the eight day saying was after these things, which were said prior to which is talking about a people that will not taste of death, but will see the kingdom of God. And you see, they've talked about this with um, with Enoch. It's tradition that they've passed down that they believed he was born at the 6th of Savan. 
Well, personally, I don't think he was born at the 6th of Sivan. I believe he was born on the 15th of Sivan. I believe he was born at the true Feast of Weeks, the true Pentecost. That's where I believe he was born. Not some in-between day, you know, quarter sun is out or quarter moon. Cell, I mean, there's no nothing going on then. When you realize these, that there are three observances a year that they're to go and not appear empty to the Lord, which is Passover, Sukkot, right? Or sorry, uh, Shavuot for Feast of Weeks and um, Feast of Tabernacles. This one here, they were all after a full moon, right? The mid-month, except, or at the full moon, except for one. It was this one. It was out of place. Well, those temple scrolls helped clear it up for us. So there's three times they're going. I believe Enoch was truly born at the true um, Pentecost. And when we see, and essentially that's what they're saying here, they just have it at a different date. That's all that's going on. They just have it at a, at a different date. And it's believed in their tradition that all these big figures were taken on the day that uh, either taken or died on the day of their birth. Okay? So in his case, it would be at Pentecost. However, there's something very, very interesting. See, because Enoch uh, might be a foreshadowing of the removal prior to judgment. But look at what we have here. We have a reference to the Feast of Harvest. Another name for the Feast of Weeks is this Hebrew name, the Feast of Harvest. Since it is celebrated the, uh, at the first, sorry, at the time of the first harvest, it is interesting that Jesus frequently used the harvest as an idiom in referencing, in referring to, sorry, the ingathering of believers. The what? The ingathering of believers. This is what we've been talking about. This is kind of a mystery. You know, the, the Jews don't really spend too much time on Pentecost or, or Shavuot. It's kind of like this thing they kind of partly pay attention to and do. You see, I was talking to uh, our brother um, uh, uh, Mark today, and I was talking to him about the menorah. And I talked to you guys about it before. And he said, wait a second, it's kind of like the writing, isn't it? If this is the middle, and we're talking about everything being connected one side to the other, one side to the other, if this was the beginning of the fulfillment, this will be the end day's beginning of the fulfillment. Tabernacles is a type and shadow of Passover. Okay? And I believe this is going to be that connection. In the Western world, if this is the center of the world, which is Israel, which is Jerusalem, which is where God's name is written, which is the place he leased out, if you will, to the Jews, but will claim it back again as his own. It's the center. And the Western world writes and reads from left to right towards Israel. The Eastern side of the world writes from right to left and reads from right to left to the center, which is Israel. So I believe it's highly probable and more than possible that we're going like this, from outside in, from outside in. Almost like the first will be last, the last will be first. Just like the Gospels. The exact same type and shadow of story going on. And it makes sense. It's all throughout Scripture. It's all throughout the end time revelation that we have. We have Matthew, Mark, Luke in the synoptics. We know that the end is Luke, Mark, and Matthew. You want to know another easy way to understand? <laughs> You're going to say, no kidding. Trumpets and atonement are already passed. <laughs> So you say, oh, well, you're just doing that because, you know, there's nothing left in the year. Well, no, we've been talking about it even prior, right? Prior to that, at least this one. But we've got clarity, and I'm going to show it to you as we keep going here today. I believe we're looking at tabernacles, and I believe I'm going to be able to show it. And this is what's going on here 
with this ingathering because the Feast of Tabernacles is also the lesser known Feast of ingathering. And maybe it's a reason why there's not too much observance by it with the Jews right now. Let me find that uh, article I had showed you guys last time. All right, this one right here. Right, the names used uh, in the Torah are this for Feast of in Festival of Ingathering. See, the Harvest Festival. So I wonder even if when Chuck Missler was was talking about this, if he understood that this Feast of Harvest, you see, because they say the Feast of Weeks, he's saying here is also the Feast of Harvest. Okay, and that Jesus refers to the Feast of Harvest as an idiom for the ingathering of believers. So you're not getting this just from me. You're getting it in a roundabout way from Chuck Missler, but I don't believe Chuck Missler understood it to fully because this Feast of Ingathering, which I'm sure he did know, has to do with when Enoch would have been taken because it's not observed, if you guys remember. Remember? And thou shalt observe the Feast of Weeks of the first fruits, which is the, the 1061. Okay, this is the first fruits of the wheat harvest and the Feast of Ingathering at the year's end. Which year's end? It is the year's end of the harvest. And it's an end. It's a year's end. So what, when we were talking about this last time, we know that there was either a, 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 a Nissan or a, a, a Trumpets, right? A Tishri, either one or the other. They, they're both the start of a year, okay? Not talking about trees and all those things, but the literal starts of years. Well, God works everything on these harvests. The whole thing is about harvests. The whole menorah, the entire menorah is harvests. So if the type and shadow of him being taken as when he was gone, but him being 365, wouldn't the 365 make sense to be connected to an end? Like the feast of ingathering at the year's end? See, and this is this was a key that I went to go look up when I got into uh, Leviticus. So it says translated to Feast of Ingathering or, Festi or, or Harvest Festival. Translated the Feast of Booths. This corresponds to the double significance of Sukkot. The one is mentioned in the book of Exodus is the agricultural one in nature. The Festival of Ingathering at the year's end. Precisely what we were talking about. It marks the end of the harvest time, the agriculture. The more elaborate religious significance one is Leviticus. Now, let me ask you something. Let me show you something actually real quick. Do you know how many times, and I, I just this just came to me now, so I'm not going to tell you the answer how many times. I don't know it off the top of my head. Do you know how many times it says the Jews' feast of the Passover the Jews' Feast of Tabernacles, the Jews' Feast of this, the Jews' Feast of that. Like, what the heck? It's the Jews' Feast. At no point did they say the Gentiles' Feast. In the end of days, the Gentiles, during uh, not during the end of days, but during the millennium, they're going to have to come at Tabernacles if they want water, right? if they want the rains and everything to continue. Right, we read that in um, in Zechariah fourteen, but all of this until then is the feast of the Jews, the feast of the Jews, the feast of the Jews. It just kind of popped to my mind now. It's all feast of the Jews. The more elaborate one is the one in Leviticus, which is the feast of the Jews. This one right here. But there's this mysterious one that they're not paying much attention to, <coughs> which is the feast of ingathering which is connected to the middle of the menorah, which is connected to the center, which is connected to the Holy Ghost, right? At Pentecost. 
Because just like Chuck Missler was saying, like Jesus says, he refers them to as harvest and ingathering. And the scriptures told us that it's not to be observed. What's not to be observed? The Feast of Weeks until the Feast of Ingathering. I hope, I hope you're catching what I'm putting down. There's no other time that this Feast of Weeks is to be observed. So the Feast of Weeks is on the 15th of Savan. And maybe they're being gathered. It's being gathered and brought in. See, gathered in because it's the in gathering. Okay, you're going to see that when we get into it. There's this, there's this gathering in. And you're going to see where we see that in scripture and what it's connected to. It's all connected to the time of the ingathering. And when you see it where I'm going to show you in Leviticus, I think that's when you guys are going to say, whoa. But I'm going to tell you, we're going to take it with a, with a grain of salt. And the reason we're going to take it with a grain of salt besides the fact that I haven't heard any audible or anything from the Lord, is we're going to take it with a grain of salt because we don't know the calendars maybe, right? I told you before, I am not calendar chasing. I am not going to say this calendar, that calendar, that calendar. If it doesn't take place in this whole week here, but right here, I got nothing on a date for you. It doesn't mean I can't go into scriptures and keep breaking them down. I told you that before. But, after this period here, even to 717, still worth keeping note of. But don't forget, what did Jesus say? Okay? If this is the escape at the first of, at the first of uh, Tabernacles, which I'm going to show you the information on it, remember what John 7 just said. He goes up about the midst of the Feast of Tabernacles of the Feast of the Jews. So there might be something else going on in here because this is also what? 717. That's something that comes up into a lot of people's views too, isn't it? You see? So let me show you another thing that ties into this. A number of people have been uh, wondering about this, me included. Okay? Let me show you something here in Luke 21. This is something we were scratching our heads over. And our brother uh, Johnny, or Yanni, over in Greece, shared this with us. Oh, I went too far. The word summer, okay? In Luke 21, verse 30. Uh, and when they now shoot forth, you see and know for yourselves that summer is now nigh at hand. Well, the word summer is heat, summer, okay? To us, to us Gentiles, we read this and we're like, oh, I guess it's just the heat of summer. You know, what more am I supposed to do with this? How do we explain this when summer's now passed? What do we do? Summer's passed, yet this is connected apparently to some portion of this starting. Right? This is a piece of scripture we just don't go into very much. We, I know there's a difference with all the trees compared to her tree and his tree. But there's something going on with this summer thing. Well, our brother Johnny had shared. Check this out. Here's the word summer. Okay? Remember, he's Greek. So the Greek to English. Here's the word for summer. Same things that you see in the scriptures. Heat, hot, summer. These are the words that are related to summer. Harvest, reaper, all those things. All right? Well, when you come down and you read down through the etymology, noun two... It talks about harvest, and it says, hence, the time of the swath. Well, what if we click on this? The word summer comes from the root harvest. And what does it mean? Here it is. The harvest season of wheat and other cereals. The harvest season of wheat. So... The word summer there that we're looking at, we could read this as when you when they now shoot forth, you see and know for yourselves 
that the wheat harvest is now nigh at hand. Well, when is when is the wheat harvest? But it's beyond the wheat harvest. See, you know that the wheat harvest is at hand. But what do we know about the harvest of the wheat? <laughs> it's going to be so hammered into your head. What do we know about the harvest of the wheat? It's not observed. It's not observed till the end gathering. It's awesome stuff. Let's see what other things that I want to cover with you guys. And don't worry, I'm still going there. I just had a couple other little pieces that I wanted to share with you guys as well. Oh, before I forget, I was also asked about um, the fifth and seventh month. I'm sure there's some of you that have been asking about that as well or wondering about that. I've been talking forever and don't worry, it's like a little build up for you, all right? I'm still building up. I'm letting you guys ponder. I'm just I'm just kind of going tonight. I like I said I'm a little bit uh, so it's coming. <laughs> it's coming. But I know that some of you have had these questions. Right? Like this one right here. How is it, Alan? You were talking about the fasting and mourning in the 5th and the 7th month even those 70 years. So if they turned 71 in March. Well, we don't know that they turned 71 in March. Well, okay, sorry. March, here we go. March 11th, right? That 10th to the 11th. From when they had a government, yes, they have turned 71. However, what we've been talking about ever since this date happened, came to pass. We've been looking to say, where, Lord God, where are you counting from? Okay? And we thought maybe there was a chance then it was Nissan 1. And then we thought maybe it was Passover. And then we thought maybe it was this time of Pentecost. And then we thought maybe it was down to Tishri. Or before the ninth of Av. And then before the Tishri. But this, the reason we can know that where God was counting from hasn't begun yet is because nothing's begun yet. Nothing's happened. So what I'm, what I'm getting at is this, that the 70 years that are prophesied here and spoken about, just like it says here, let's go into chapter 1, when it says, over Jerusalem, when you have mercy of the land, these... 70 years. See, I was jealous. Now I'm sore jealous. And it's I'm going to forward now the affliction. And what happens? They're going to be scattered everywhere. Well, that hasn't happened yet. And what does it say? These 70 years. In chapter 7, it says those 70 years. Which means you would think... I mean, to me, this this simplest thing... I would say it must be from uh, 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 when they truly had their government. So last year would have been the final time. And then they, they turned 71 when they had their government. But nothing said that's where God's counting from. He doesn't base it on when men come back into the land and do their thing. He's got his own timing. And so if this was counted these were both counted this year in the fifth and seventh month which just passed right the seventh month one just passed okay that means that god didn't begin his counting at tishri there's somewhere else that the lord god is counting his end and his beginning from his end and his beginning from his what? His year's end and the beginning from. Well, what is he looking at? What's he t what does he base everything off of? Harvests? What, it, what does he reference everybody as? Harvests? Is it possible? Is it probable that the Lord God is counting his end of year 
from the end of the harvest at the in gathering as it's literally called and the reason the 10 percent the first fruits of the bride of christ the first fruits wheat harvest the reason they haven't left yet is because their time hasn't come to be observed yet meaning this year because if god is counting this as his year's end then that means they would have observed the seventh and fifth month fasting and mourning because in 1949 when they became a government they had a nation of people and a government by that march 10th time frame of 1949 god didn't begin his count till after the year's end so you would be counting from this late september early october time frame of 1949 so this would be that 70th one that they've observed but you know what like all of these things there's an end there's a literal end we cannot come to these fifth and seventh month next year there is no saying well there's a 70th next year and there's no saying there's a 70th after this coming weekend to maybe the end because you know this might be the final with the eighth day but in this range here there is zero other end of year possibility until spring of next year let that sink in those who have been following for a little while i know you're 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 catching what i'm saying this is the last end for the 70 count right not turning 70 this is like 70 and 365 days either between here and here or here to here i believe it's relating to here and i'm going to show you that scripture too okay check out some of these cool things so i hope that helps with this fifth and seventh month you can understand what i'm saying now it was all about where the lord god is counting from and we're starting to see much more clearly now i've seen it clearly that i know where that end is now and that's why i'm telling you i i have no other end after this there is no other n70 that connects anywhere all right so when the lord god gave me the confirmation of 50 and that i was right on target because i was understanding the 50 and the 14 and all that stuff then how come we didn't go like i said earlier at at uh, pentecost because the time to observe it wasn't yet has everybody been chosen maybe out of the 100 out of the 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 10 percent maybe maybe because it was the the harvest began back then you see you want to talk about staying on your toes now right we should always be on our toes always watching and praying and you know keeping from sin and being repentant right i think we're gonna see each other really really soon and i mean (laughs) very soon okay check this out look at what they read this is hallel these are the psalms that they read and they read them on the holy days remember i said those three holy days uh, those three holy harvests that they're to go present to before the lord right passover pentecost and feast of tabernacles however in the end which one is for everybody the feast of tabernacles look at what they read it's a prayer they read which is psalms 113 to 118 praise and thanksgiving look 
Hallel cons- uh, consists of six psalms, 113 through 118, which are recited as a unit on joyous occasions, including the three pilgrim feasts, Passover, Shavuot, and Sukkot, the bigger Jewish holidays. Okay? Well-known Hanukkah and Rosh Kodesh, the beginnings of the month. But the three big ones are the key. The reason I find this interesting is you guys know this, don't you? You guys know what I'm going to get at. Remember the book of Psalms having opened up to us? Look at this. Ours ends with Psalms 18. Ends with Psalms 18. When's this ending of when they're going to be saying it on Psalms 18? Right here. At Sukkot. At Tabernacles. Is this that week that we've been talking about? A Psalms 18 week? Is this that Psalms 18 week once the bride's gone? We're right here, brothers and sisters. I'm telling you with everything I understand, I'm looking at this, but you guys discern it for yourselves. Is this that week while the bride has gone to the wedding with the Lord? Is this that week that Psalms 18 plays out? That the, the Levitical group is, is starts to get chosen, right? Or like that the priestly workers here for for the seals. I shouldn't even say the priestly ones. That would be more like the trumpet time. I'm talking about the, the apostles and disciples that will come out of that. All right? That craziness that we read in Psalms 18 that I've been telling you guys for almost three years, it has not happened. I believe it's going to take place before everything begins. And I don't mean before the bride goes. You see, what about this year's end? What does Christ say? If we go, let's go look at that real quick. Let's go to uh, Psalms 18. We're not going to go in through all of it, but you can see there's like a ripping apart, you know, there, there's destruction. There's things falling from the sky, which by the way, I tried to open Dana Carvey, uh, Dana Carvey, <laughs> Dana Coverstone's uh, November uh, vision about the stone hitting the water and a ripple became huge waves. And he was saying the finger hit the second and third week. And then it went to November 30th, I think it was, or whatever it is. And that's when the stone hit and it caused, well, guess what? If you do 40 days from when the Lord would return at about an eighth day. So if this is the bride escapes, seven day wedding, he returns about an eight days and you begin his 40 days. His 40 days are done. I believe it's November 19th. And just about a little over a week, 10 days later. Oh, isn't that interesting? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Right in this time frame would be when the Queen of the South hits. Right? Something falling from above. We talked about that a long time ago. Okay? So... We've talked about even Psalms 18 a while ago, too. I mean, there is some wild stuff. Like, look at this. Uh, The channels of water were seen, and the foundations of the world were discovered at thy rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of thy nostrils. He delivered me because he he loved me, right? I I was with him, and he delivered me into a large place. We talked about that a long time, uh, a lot of times. However... We know a little bit more than we used to, right? We know this revelation from Exodus about the ingathering and and the time of tabernacles when the Lord would return at the year's end. Okay? Well, what do we see here? Psalms 19. Right after this period of time that they finished singing, the Psalms 13 through 18, what would come next? Psalms 19, when it says their line has gone out through all the earth, their words to the end of the world, in them he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom 
coming out of his chamber and rejoicing as a strong man ready to run a race. Well, hold on a second. That sounds like he just came out from being with his bride, doesn't it? And he's ready to run his race. What race would the Lord have? A 40-day race at the beginning. That's what it's all about. The Son of Man as the uh, the Son of Man here for 40 days that we've talked about over two and a half years. Well, you want to see what's interesting about that? Watch this. This is what they sing going up to that time. Do you remember what we talked about in the past? What comes next? Do you understand how <laughs> how revealing it is that here in Ministry Revealed, we've understood this for a long time, these counts. And people will say, oh, no, 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 we should be in 2020 now. No, they're off by one year. They're off, they're off by, you can say that one to two year that they're off. Okay, it 19 is going to start when people would say the real 2020 or 21 is going to start in the fall or has started, some people would say. Okay, we've gone through these. This is the order of them. And look at what we have here. Okay, look at what we have right here on this side. 119, which is the start of it, right to the end at 133. And what is it? The 14 years and the Jubilee 15th, 22nd, 50th. It's the final big Jubilee. All right? That final count to the end after the Lord has come. And listen to what the scriptures say about it. There's even your 19 because we do it on both sides, right? Look at this. We do it from 18 to 33. We do it from 118 to 133. Now watch this. Let's go to see what it says about what they also sing about, okay? I'm going to show you this one down here in a second. It's called the songs of a, uh, the Song of Ascents. The Song of Ascents is a title given to 15 of the Psalms, which they will say 120 through 134, but for us, we look at 119 through 133. Now, please understand, I didn't find this and then put those Psalms together in the chapter to year. I discovered the chapter to year count in the revelation of the 14 years, and this was sent to me later by somebody in a link. They're called the Songs of Ascent, okay? And what are they about? Watch this. Many scholars believe the title indicates that these Psalms were sung by worshipers as they ascended the road to Jerusalem to attend the three pilgrim feasts. There it is again. And what's the reference to it? Deuteronomy 16. Well, we're going to go into Deuteronomy 16 in a minute. Okay? So where's this Where's this connection again? To the three pilgrim feasts. This is during the, the ascent and having the 15 steps to climb up. Very interesting. Look at this. Uh, one view says... The Levites first sang the songs at the dedication of Solomon's temple during the 15th of Tishri. During the what? During the what? <laughs> during the 15th of Tishri? Well, that's directly connected to what we're looking at, isn't it? To the what? 15th of Tishri? What else does it say? Another study suggests <coughs> that they were composed of a celebration after Nehemiah's rebuilding of Jerusalem's walls. Well, I'll show you another type and shadow outside of this 15th of Tishri, which is interesting for us. It's also interesting because this was the dedication of the temple, which is the time during trumpets, right? That's what's going to happen again. And what else is going to happen during trumpets? The rebuilding of the walls, just like we re read in Daniel. So this is going to have a connection with the Levites, the 144,000, during the time of the temple having been rebuilt and the time of rebuilding of the walls. That's going to happen during trumpets. But we have another interesting connection here to the 15th of Tishri and to the three pilgrim feasts. But now watch this. 
We have uh, the historical part of it. Here's the Christian. This is why I'm saying we're looking at 119 through 133. The liturgical use of these Psalms came into Christianity through its Jewish roots, the form of the scriptures used by the early church, at least so far as the Hebrew Bible was concerned, was primarily the Septuagint. In the Septuagint, these Psalms were numbered 119 through 133. What are all these Psalms about? There's the revelation of the end of days built into them. Guys, we have this happen here in this ministry over and over and over and over and over again. I'm I'm adding all these other pieces to show that, guys, we are here. There's no other... There's no other revelation of days. None. It's here. Let me keep going. Now let's get into this with uh, Leviticus. Let's really get into this exciting, exciting piece of all this. Okay? Remember when we were just here in, uh, was it Songs of Ascent? Uh, I think it was. Yes. In Songs of Ascent here, we see it was during the three pilgrim feasts. And it refers us to Deuteronomy 16.16. Which is very interesting. Because when I came across that, and I was reminded of this just as I was studying, I had already been working on Deuteronomy 16.16. Because we have this gathering in connection that I wanted to do a search on. It only shows up in four places as gathered in. But the one in Isaiah is a completely different reference. So we're looking at these three right here. And wait till you see the the importance and the relevance of this. Look at what we have in Deuteronomy 16. Thou shalt observe the feast of tabernacles Seven days. Are you ready? Let me bring it up on Esort. I want you guys to let this one soak in. Where was I? Uh, 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 Deuteronomy 16. Just in reading it, let it soak in. Okay? What is Deuteronomy 16 talking about? The three main feasts, right? That was the reason that this said... Deuteronomy 16, because it's talking about the three pilgrim festivals. That's what Deuteronomy 16 is talking about, okay? You have Passover. You have the Feast of Weeks. You see, from such time as thou beginnest to put the sickle to the corn. When you begin to put the sickle to the corn. This is the 50 we've been talking about, right? That's what the Lord was confirming to me. But it already passed, so what do we do? Remember corn, remember Ruth. See, and the Levite that is within thy gates and the stranger. Do you remember Ruth was also called a stranger at the time of her picking corn to the end of the harvest? Remember she was gleaning the stuff that fell in the corners, right? That are to be left. Well, how about this? Thou shall, there it is again. Observe the Feast of Tabernacles seven days. Check this out. Look at this word right here. What's the craziest, sharpest color I can put it in? One simple little word. And thou shalt observe the Feast of Tabernacles seven days after. After. That thou has gathered in thy corn and thy wine. Thy corn and the wine. At the what? At the ingathering or the gathered in? So what comes first? The seven days of the Feast of Tabernacles? No. The bringing in of the corn and the wine first. This is what comes in first. See, this is what comes in first, as in bringing it into an open area 
a big open area this is what it's talking about seven days thou shalt keep a solemn feast unto the lord in the place which the lord shall choose in the place which the lord shall choose is where you're going to observe the seven days after the harvested corn is brought in once and for all here it is three times a year shall thy male appear thy males appear before the lord thy god in the place which he shall choose in the feast of unleavened bread and in the feast of weeks and in the feast of tabernacles and none shall appear before him empty see but where are they gathered in you see guys we know wine is something that comes later and is more associated with tabernacles but we've missed the fact that it's corn that it's wheat ground corn it's the grain same as wheat and where is it at the beginning see you're going to observe the seven days of tabernacles after you bring in the corn after you bring in the corn watch this in leviticus here it comes brothers and sisters here's where i'm going to nail it i'm going to lock it in with what i'm about to show you here remember there were two connections remember they were saying there were two connections right one is more elaborate which is for the jews and there's this other in gathering at the year's end which is only mentioned in exodus twice remember this whole connection with enoch and jesus even by chuck missler it's the feast of weeks but they only understand the feast of weeks happening at the feast of weeks but this feast of harvest and the harvest is relating to the time of it being gathered in The only time it's gathered in is at tabernacles. Watch this. I love how this is laid out. In fact, I'm going to give you a little taste, a little reminder taste of how it's laid out so you can get the idea. Remember in the last video? I thought of this instantly when I realized what I was what I was finding. Remember the last video? We said, but first, it'll be as Enoch, right? This is when he comes for 40 days. Likewise, also they bought and they sold. This is at the time of the rapture because it's related to the mark of the beast and it's in his days, meaning while he was living there. So this is after this is to the rapture. And then verse 29 said, but meaning this is another time now and it's related to the last day of Lot. It rained down fire and brimstone. So in these two verses, what did we have? Two periods of time. That was part of the towards the end of the last video. So we have the escape and and his 40 days. We have the mark of the beast time and then when they're going to be raptured out. And then we got the time of the revealing and it was the difference between the two words revealed 601 compared to the revealed 602. Okay? It was a great little study in that last portion of the video. Well, this is that same type of thing that you're going to see stand out that everything's mentioned for the feasts and then suddenly there's it's almost like um like a oh wait a second and this is the reason or another reason why these guys here are saying there's a double significance to Sukkot but there's one that's more elaborate which is really the one for the Jews okay and they'd be correct in saying that that's the why that's why even Jesus said in john chapter 7 the feast of tabernacles the feast of the jews but check this out look at this division that happens okay the feast of the lord starts with the sabbath then it goes into the passover the 14th day of the first month and on the 15th day the same shall be unleavened bread okay so then it goes passover into unleavened bread and then you've got first fruits. First fruits, this was Christ, of course. These are the spring harvests, right? The spring feasts. 
This is relating to Christ. This is the beginning. This one was Christ. We've talked about it many, uh, many times. We keep going. Then you got the Feast of Weeks. This, as I was just showing you, is clearly about the 10% bride of Christ. Yet, how is it that they shall be baking with leaven? They are the first fruits unto the Lord. That's the Gentile bride of Christ. See, the first fruits crop. So what's going on? What have, what have we missed? Why are we still here? Well, we know it's because we don't get observed until the ingathering. So we follow this story. Here it is. The, the priest shall wave, see, and the priest shall wave them with the bread of the first fruits for a wave offering. It's the story of the of the reaping of the harvest, all, all that portion. And then what do we have? Then you got Feast of Trumpets. Very straightforward, three little verses. There it is. Then you've got Day of Atonement. Day of Atonement. More detailed, but straightforward. Then you got Feast of Booths. So what have we just done? Of course, we just went through looking at the menorah. Everything's in order. And listen to what it says about the Feast of Booths. In Leviticus 23, starting in verse 34. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of the seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles, for seven days unto the Lord. On the first day shall be a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. Uh, wait a second. Are we missing something? The 15th day of the seventh month is the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. The first day shall be a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work. Uh, what am I missing? Hold on a second. Didn't we just read what's going to happen at the Feast of Booths, the time of ingathering? Thou shalt observe the Feast of Tabernacles seven days after thou hast gathered in thy corn. Hmm, are we getting more clarity here? I think we're starting to get a little bit more clarity. What's going to get better? It's going to get much more clear. Okay, here we are, Feast of Booths. Shall be a holy convocation, verse 36. Seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. On the eighth day shall be a holy convocation to you, and you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It shall be a solemn assembly, and you shall do no servile work therein. What's that? That's our revelation of Shmini Aretz, the eighth day assembly right here. This is, I am... With all I know, with all I understand, this is, this eighth day of that feast is this right here from Luke 9, 28. And it came to pass about an eight days. See, remember last year we were looking at this and I was saying back then I was 99% sure that was the first time I had ever said 99% in my life about any particular day. And it came and went. I never expected we get this far again. Well, we're not getting this far again. Because here's what it says next. You see, this is part of the growing revelation of understanding that came. And this was just in the last two, three weeks. After these sayings. So it came to pass about an eight days after these sayings. So that means eight days before this were these sayings. What sayings? When he comes to take out a people for his name. There are going to be some of you standing here which shall not taste of death till you see the kingdom of God. And it said after eight days of these sayings. That means prior to him coming at this about an eighth day. Which means somewhere I believe in here. Okay, <laughs> we're right here. 
Now, if the calendars are screwed up, and I don't believe they are. I don't believe the calendars are all screwed up personally. Too many things have happened on the calendars. You know, we, we've got all these programs and astronomy programs and uh, astrology programs and everything else. I always mix that up, astronomy, astrology. You know, we've got all the programs to see that. We know the sun, we know the rotation, we know the start. We, we can understand all these things. I think one of the reasons maybe for the, you know, um, I think like our brother Ivan talks about with being the month off, I think when it returns back to as it was in the beginning, when the seals are over, we've talked about this before, that's when I believe the days will go back to as they were. That month difference will shift in five days less per year during the time of trumpets in 360-day years. And the, the constellations will probably be realigned at that point to as they were in the beginning, just like the scriptures say. Okay, so I don't believe we're off on the calendars personally, but I say take it with a grain of salt because it's impossible, I think, for any of us to really know because there are so many voices that how could we really, really, really know unless the Lord told us? But we've had many things happen completely aligned on the Hebrew calendar, and it's one thing to say it's chance. When they happen on the first feast, last feast, first feast, last feast, first feast, last feast, festival of trees, back-to-back years. So I I don't want to just throw that out. And it really hurts my heart and my brain and my thinking process trying to say, well, okay, it's not this calendar. It's it's not this calendar. But I say take it with a grain of salt. But this is the period I'm looking at right here. This is the period I'm looking at. And it's precisely what the scriptures are telling us. This is it right here. Now let's continue here in Leviticus 23. Okay. So we've got all of these portions of their feasts being spoken about. There's no issue. There's no hesitation with them. It shall be a solemn assembly. You shall do no servile work there in verse 37. Listen to this. Okay. 37 and 38. These are the feasts of the Lord which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations to offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering and a meat offering, a sacrifice and a drink offering, and drink offerings, everything upon his day, beside the Sabbaths of the Lord, and beside your gifts, and beside all your vows, and beside all your free will offerings, which you give unto the Lord. What does this sound like to you? <laughs> Thank you for the observing of all these feasts. See, he's closed it out by saying these are the feasts of the Lord. And they are. This is the last one. Feast of booths, right? Tabernacle, same thing. In gathering, same thing. But wait a second. There's still more there's still more to go in the chapter. Wait a second, what do we have going on here? I thought he just closed out what he was telling us about the feasts. And all of a sudden the revelation shows up. Leviticus 23 verse 39. Check it out. How often do we see this special word? It pops up in these divisions of understanding all the time in Scripture. Also, in the 15th day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruit of the land. Well, we say, oh, wait a second, we're not fruit. We're wheat. Exactly fruit or grain which is the increase the revenue the money paid right the money that you're going to receive the revenue for it fruit or grain isn't that what deuteronomy 16 said too what did it say at booths after that thou has gathered in thy corn and thy wine he's telling us the same thing it's interesting that it talks about it here in deuteronomy 16 
as the Feast of Booths. But when we come to it over here in Leviticus, we've got all the details of the literal Feast of Tabernacles. The one they were saying is the more elaborate one for the Jews. But for the rest of us, there's this also, like a little asterisk side note. On that same day, the 15th day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruit and grain, the increase of thy land. You want to see what the root word is? Can you handle it? To go, carry, depart. Isn't the bride get carried away, remember? In the 15th day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruit, the grain of thy land, you shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. What the heck is going on? On the first day shall be a Sabbath, on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. But, I mean, you call these holy convocations, solemn assemblies. But down here, as if you're speaking to a, to a different group. Because it's the gathered in. Remember I was telling you that? It's the gathered in. In Exodus 23, we spoke about. In Leviticus 23, I just showed you. And in Deuteronomy 16, I just showed you. All three of these are the same reference. Watch this. Let's go to that Exodus 23 one again. Watch this. Oops. Watch this as I begin to wind this down. Three times in a year, and the harvest of the first fruits, which is the Gentile bride of Christ, the 10% feast of weeks of thy labors, which thou hast sown in the field, and the feast of ingathering, which is in the end of the year, when thou hast, what? Gathered in thy labors out of the field. Brothers and sisters, I'm not sure I could really beat it down any more than that. I'm, I, I, I don't know what more I can give you. I think we just found the literal revelation of the Feast of Ingathering literally, literally being, where's the rest of it? Literally being the stuff that was to come in that's now to be observed for the Gentile Bride of Christ, which would explain why in Psalms 19, in understanding the chapters to years in order that at the beginning, after the years end, the Lord returns. After the end of the year, the Lord returns at the beginning at about and eight days and when is that going to be as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber rejoicing as a strong man ready to run a race and why is that because he just spent his week with his gentile bride it's the revelation we've spoken about it many times those seven days right those seven days that we see with Leah and Rachel, that he had to fulfill those seven days with Leah first. We see Luke, we see Christ here telling them, let your loins be ready, uh, uh, let your loins be girded about, and your lights burning, and you all, and you yourselves, like unto men that wait for their Lord, when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom when he cometh, I uh, shall find watching. And he's going to sit down with them and serve them. All right? We've talked about that. There's only one group in the, in the discourses, uh, one group 
in the in the 40 days when the lord returns or when he resurrected for 40 days there's only one group he sat down with served and ate with and this is that revelation of that group see that vanished this was where that vanish was of his one time used only in luke because i believe this is that also this is connected to that revelation potentially from uh, john chapter 7 when he's in the midst of it guys i think we found it i think we found it the revelation that the lord was confirming for me here was that after look at this oh my goodness i just saw that see that i don't want to play it you see that after after the 50th oh my goodness what did i just find in there was it deuteronomy 16 deuteronomy 16 had the exact same word there it is after i didn't even realize that till just now I was accentuating, accentuating, going in the sharpest color I could after that thou hast gathered in thy corn and thy wine. Whoa. After the 50th. What is this after? It's the gathering in of the 50th. Then the tribulation begins. Whoa. I will, Lord. You see, things like that will happen, but I'm not going to tell you, thus saith the Lord, because I never spoke to the Lord. But we may have just received a little piece of confirmation there. Maybe a big piece of confirmation. All right. Now, now that you guys can soak that in, you guys can understand it, you guys can rewatch it again if you need to, let me end with a fun note for you guys. Another little piece of scripture revelation uh, from a sister, and I apologize, I don't remember her name that shared it over in the forum. Don't forget, you guys, when I say the forum, for anybody that wants to come and join and hang out with us and chit-chat, you can come to our website here at ministryrevealed.com and see our incredible website that our brother Jimmy has built for us, I think three times now, uh, two or three times he's rebuilt it. Look at this. And do you know what happens? All of the videos, check this out. He made an increase, uh, 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 an upgrade. When you go to the videos page, everything on the site is free. When you go to the video site, uh, uh, the videos page of the website, it's taken a little bit long because there's probably close to 250 videos there. When you come to this, look at what he did. See, every video is added here. The talk about them, the little write-up about them, everything is here, okay? All of the videos that we did, everything that's on YouTube is also here. Look at what he did. Download the video. You don't have to worry about clicking on the video anymore, right-clicking it, downloading it. You can literally just come right here and click download, and you could save it on USBs. You could just keep it on your phone, you know, whatever you wanted to do. So I just want to share that he did such a great job. Thanks, Jimmy. It's such a a blessing to to have this uh, website and a place where something like this. See, this is the forum that I'm talking about. You guys can come click on the forum, and this is what it looks like. See, people are sharing, and they're asking for prayers and a little bit of humor sometimes. And Whoa, I forgot about this. Since I'm here, look at this, brothers and sisters. This is our brother Neil who painted this. I'm always surprised by the by the gifts that so many of our brothers and sisters have when they share it. I'm just like, you what? Right? Great job. Great job. So I wanted to share that so you guys know how to get there and uh, kind of navigate it a little bit. I wanted to show you. So this was shared in the forum, and it was about G2020. It's kind of interesting, right? G2020 never even dawned on me to look it up. Well, look at this. I'm going to show you the Hebrew one. Not that we need to find a connection so much to the Hebrew one. 
uh, as to where it talks about it because it's it's the Hebrew one. However, watch this. 2020. Remember our little sister Mila said 2020. Uh, we know all these things were connected to 2020. We know the count has to begin this year. Well, watch this. Rescue and deliverance. It's used one time. Why? Because there's only going to be one deliverance. Oh, okay, I'm going to go down a little trail. I never expected to go down, but I'm only going to do it for like a minute or two. Remember the word deliverance? Who is the deliverer? Hosea is the deliverer. Remember that? Hosea. Hosea. And Jesus tells us in, in Romans 9, right, that the Gentiles also and Hosea, right, Osi, those who I said will not be mine will become mine and her, my beloved, who I said was not my beloved shall become my beloved. Osi is Hosea. And what does Hosea's mean, name mean? The deliverer. But why I'm saying, you know why it makes sense it's only one time? Why is it only one deliverance? This is so awesome. Because in Numbers 13, here he is again. See the name Hosea? It says Osi, but look, it's Hosea, deliverer. This is the type and shadow of Christ. He's the son of noon. Remember, I was telling you, this is the whole revelation of 50 equals 1450. Okay. Noon, which is the Greek, uh, sorry, the, the Hebrew letter for 14 is the father of Osi. And Osi means deliverer. And Jesus as Hosea is only going to be the rescuing deliverer one time. And you say, but wait a second. I thought he was coming and there's going to be the rapture during the seventh year of rest after the six years of seals. You're right. But he's no longer going to be the deliverer. He's going to be Yeshua. Because Moses ends up changing his name and said he called Osi, the son of Nun, Yeshua. Yeshua, Messiah. He's not coming. He's not coming again as the deliverer. He's coming as Yeshua. You follow that? You see how awesome that is? And hence, the one, the 2020 that we have, which is only used once, is perfectly fitting. But now watch this. Let me show you a couple pieces here in the Greek as I finish this up. Let's go 2020 in the Greek. It means to begin to dawn, to begin to grow light, right? Comes from to illuminate, comes from 214 as well. The root, part of the root, which is to shine upon, that is become visible, to appear, to give light. Well, how many times did it show up? Twice. Twice. In two places, it's about the beginning of dawn. This the shining of light coming up. Well, watch this. Do you know where it's used? <coughs> it's only used twice, as you see. It's used in Matthew 28, 1 and Luke 23, 54. Watch this. See how awesome this is? And do you know how we're able to do this, brothers and sisters? For those that are newer? We've been revealed the Gospels. There are two keys given to this ministry. Who the Gospels are speaking to and the truth of the 14 years, the two sets of seven. With those two keys, all of this begins to unravel and open up. Watch this. It goes all the way to the end of Luke 23. What happens at this point? Watch this. And that day was the preparation. The Sabbath drew on. There it is. Okay, there's one of the two times it's used. Well, what do we see in the next verse? And the woman also, the women also, which came to the galley, followed after, how his body was laid. So the light and his body is laid down. What do we have in the next verse, in the next chapter? We have... 
and they entered in and found not the body of Christ. Why do you think this is so close in relation to it? Because it's the escape of the bride. We've told you guys this many times. If they went in at the third day, and on that day, Messiah, they, 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 Messiah is walking down the street with them, and they don't know it right away, do you think the body was gone here at the beginning? Or was the body of Christ, because see, the body of Christ, the, the bride of Christ, his body, is the type and shadow it's only spoken of in Luke, was already gone at the dawning of the light. At the drawing near of the light. Watch. Look at how it works out. When we follow it right into 24. And we go into chapter 1. What do we see in chapter 1? We know that Luke knows all things in order. Okay? This is the escape of the bride. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. For he hath visited and redeemed his people. This is the type and shadow of the escape of the bride of Christ. And look at what we find right towards the end. He had visited, now he's what? To give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. Then what happens? So if this is the escape and this is his coming and giving light, well, I just showed you that it was related to this time of chapter 24. What's chapter 24? Well, if we go to Luke chapter 2, it's what? The type and shadow of the Son of Man coming for 40 days at the beginning. It's all in order. Well, let's just see if this really makes sense because we've got this connected with Luke in relation to 2020 and the light shining. But... Why do we have it in Matthew 28? Because this shining that Christ is coming as as the Son of Man in 2020 is the same guy who's coming at the end. Right? This is for us. This is when he returns. He's the same one, the beginning and the end. The end and the beginning. Luke, Mark, Matthew, Matthew, Mark, Luke. Watch. Let's go to Matthew 28. Watch this. You'll see the connection for those who, who understand the ministry and see how and understand how it flows. Watch this. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn, there it is, toward the first day of the week. Remember in Luke chapter in Luke uh, uh, 23, where it was? The very next verse was about Christ. He was dead. That's when he was literally gone in his spirit, right? That's the time of the the bride being taken away. It's the same timing. What do we see here? Talking about the dawn and what do we get in the very next verse? And behold, there was a great earthquake for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven, came and rolled the stone back. Who is this angel of the Lord that caused the great earthquake? It's the son of man. We've explained this many times. It's the Son of Man. This is the great earthquake at the end of the sixth trumpet. And who shows up? Jesus does. And his countenance was what? Was like lightning. When the Lord returns feet down on the Mount of Olives and there's that great earthquake, he's what? Like lightning from one end unto the other. And what is it? At the dawn. Connected to 2020. Well, now, how does that connect back to Luke? Remember, Luke knows all things in order. And what is Matthew 28 about? The 40 days, right? The original type and shadow of the 40 days of the Son of Man when he resurrected, right? Well, what do we have in Luke chapter 4? In Luke chapter 1 is the escape of the bride. Luke chapter 2 is his 40 days here as the Son of Man. Luke chapter 3 is when he comes at the end of seals, the start of trumpets. And Luke chapter 4 is when he comes at the end of trumpets. And when he comes at the end of trumpets, it's for 40 days when Satan will have been here for two and a half years of trumpets. After the temple had been built and he goes in and takes it over and the son of man is cut off. He's returning 
feet down on the Mount of Olives in the great earthquake, and it's the 40 days being tempted of the devil. And what was Matthew 28? The Son of Man's 40 days in Matthew. The direct reference to this portion here. You see how it works? Again, another clue to what? 2020. But do we really need this anymore? <laughs> do we really need to keep showing all of these pieces over and over? Keep connecting and connecting and connecting. Well, of course I'm going to keep connecting. This is what we do. This is what energizes me. You see, even though I was excited at the beginning, I, I needed that energy again. I've been, I've been sitting on this for two days and I needed to release it. I needed to release it, but I needed to let it soak in from the last video a little bit. So that when this came out, you guys would have already had a, a, little, a little piece of that understanding that to, to discern it as it comes out here. Guys, all we have to do when we get bummed, when we get down, we're thinking, Lord, is it ever going to happen? Have we understood? Is it this year? Is we, have we really understood? All we have to do is go try, sh go to the grocery store, go to work, go for a walk and see everybody walking around in masks. It's coming, guys. And I believe in my understanding, you guys take it to the Lord yourselves. I believe this is our time right here. But I am not going to tell you with 100% certainty, nor am I going to tell myself with 100% certainty. What I can tell you is it's this year. And there's only one end left. One end left. I love you guys. I pray this helped bring a little bit more understanding and to the to the five and the seventh month and and the the menorah and why it would be from the end and you know just I pray this blesses you guys. I know it was a little bit here and there, but I pray the core of it really, really got you to say, Whoa, let me go take a closer look. Let me watch that a little closer again. Because I believe we're here. I love you guys. God bless you. See you prayerfully as we watch and pray always to be accounted worthy to stand before the Son of Man in the third heaven. I love you guys. God bless you. I'm praying for you and your families. We'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.